Hey, Science Seekers, this is Mr. Pfeiffer, and I'm uh, vaccinated. Hello, I am vaccinated with my vaccine, and we are going to put that on today because we did get our second vaccination. And uh, today's episode is about vaccinations. So let's go ahead and jump into it. I am going to read a little fast because I want to share with you an intriguing lesson that we did in class. And uh, not all of my students had exposure to it. And many of our staff actually read about this to learn about how vaccines work. So if you want to know how vaccines work, follow along with us. Now, we will not be doing the reading comprehension. We are just going to be reading as we go. So this is the novel COVID-19 virus and it's covered in protein spikes, just like the proteins in your body. These protein spikes are made of chains and amino acids. Each spike protein is identical and unique to the COVID-19. If you unfold the protein spike, you get a chain of amino acids. Amino acids are assembled from recipe or a blueprint. The recipe for making these chains is written in the languages of RNA, which is very similar to DNA. You can think of the protein and peptide chains as a cake and the RNA as the inter inter ingredient list and the recipes for making the cake, just like a DNA is the recipe for making you. Virologists and geneticists have been able to replicate small chunks of COVID-19 protein spike and then created a synthetic version of information. In other words, they wrote a recipe for making part of the protein for COVID-19 spike. They've been able to put the mRNA into a vaccine, just the RNA, not the whole virus, along with other ingredients that then help the RNA get through the cell membranes in your cells. This is a ribosome. Each human body cell has millions of ribosomes. They have two jobs. They decode mRNA messages and they translate messages into chains of amino acids and peptides. Those are what make and build your proteins. Now, the mRNA and COVID-19 vaccine, RNA, mRNA in their cells, they, call, they speak the same language. So ribosomes can translate them. Both. When mRNA from COVID-19 vaccine enters the body, specialty cell parts bring in the ribosomes translated into amino acid chains and pieces of protein. Ribosomes decode the synthetic COVID-19 mRNA and turn it into a part of the protein spike. Ribosomes do not build the entire virus though, just the specific part of the protein spike. The mRNA vaccine can't give a person COVID-19 because it doesn't have the information to build the whole virus, just the spike. After the ribosomes create amino acid chains, they are used by their cell or released. The cell doesn't need the COVID-19 protein spike particle, so it is released. The protein moves around inside human tissues, and eventually it enters what we call a macrophage cell. They like to eat stuff. Macrophages specialize in detecting and destroying harmful organisms in your body. However, macrophages cells don't just destroy harmful organisms. They deliver foreign molecules called antigens to a group of specialized white blood cells. The memory T cells is where we get into our antibodies and the human body are recognized only to one type of harmful organism. Together, they keep a record of all of the viruses and bacteria that have been harmed on your body in the past. When no memory T cells are recognized, the COVID-19 spike protein, they alert a few other white blood cells to go to work. T cells give the COVID-19 spike particle to another white blood cell. B cells identify the COVID particles as harmful molecules and then create antibodies to track down and attack any proteins from the blood and the body. Then they create a Y-shaped antibody that stays on the lookout for the COVID-19 spikes particles. In a real COVID-19 virus particle enters the body, the antibodies surround the virus and bind to the protein spikes. This prevents that virus from reproducing and making more of itself in your cells. Most antibodies remain in the human blood system and can persist for the rest of the person's life. Now, we're not sure about how long the antibodies in our blood work for this one. This is supposed to make fighting future infections easier for the white blood cells. So in summary, you can see all the different steps here as you look through and watch. And I hope you all have learned a great deal about how vaccines work in science.